I'm back uh, again. Uh, as you saw in my last video, I said that I was going to split up the video into two videos, and uh, the reason being, of course, is I did the major reveal. Now, if you saw last week's video, you saw me reveal the gun, and it looked you know, pretty much like this. Da -da 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 -da. There it is. Now I've uh, come back. I am revealing the gun again, and it looked pretty much like this. It looks exactly the same. And, as I said in the last video, that the grenade launcher, despite not being a RAP4 grenade launcher, be a third the price, is exactly the same, and it works, as you can see right here. Have... Oh, that's so cool that I can do that. Uh, anyways, how did I do that? The new laptop covered that in the last video, too. So if you haven't watched that yet, what the hell are you doing watching this video? Go watch it real quick. Anyways, in this video, however, I want to talk about my other new feature, which is the selector switch e-grip. Now, I have been dying to get this because there are two fields in uh, my area that I can really play at. There's a eh, kind of a couple others, but once they see this gun coming, they pretty much lock the doors on me. The downside is that one allows full auto or any kind of rapid fire guns. The other one does not. And anybody who's had the old e-grip knows that switching the little settings on there it's quite a beast. Tim and I was making the new e-grip and with the selector switch and I immediately had to go buy it because now you can select between semi-auto or whatever full auto format you've picked before. Uh, been waiting desperately to get this thing. I sold the old grenade launcher and the old e-grip. Just got rid of them before I even had the parts just to earn enough money to get these on such short notice because these are, without a doubt, the most expensive parts of the gun. And, uh, Finally got it in, got got it on the gun, could not wait to play with it, got to inspect it, and now I've got my review going. Now, I did say in the last video, this is actually broken. Um, it it might be broken, it might not be, it's up in the air, but Tim is sending me a new board to see if it was the board's problem or if I'm just an idiot at the settings. So. Uh, in the meantime, while I'm waiting, I don't actually need it to work right now for this video, I can't fire it anyways cops will come running if somebody's banging away inside my house. So, for the sake of the video, I don't need to need it to work exactly right. However, I'm going to get into two sections of the video. Good side and bad side, so to speak. Um, and uh, we're going to start with the good side, and by the good side I mean the outside. Um, first things first when it comes to this grip, uh, I did lose the blade trigger, which is kind of sad. I can get a new one, but I kind of like the fact that it goes back to looking like a normal gun again. I can't fire semi-auto real rapidly again, but the guy who got my old e-grip is a lucky bastard and has, you know, that trigger pre-assembled to it and now can go out and turn his A5 or whatever into a speedball gun if he wants. So, yeah, you're welcome, buddy. Got a good deal on it, too. Uh, anyways, so I kept the... Uh, basic trigger, so it still looks like a regular gun. Now, uh, the first thing I have to say is, the, the number one thing is that they have, have the selector switch now. Thank God for that. Uh, it kind of sucks that you still have to choose between, you, you still have to set it up here to whatever firing mode um, you, you want, instead of, you know, just it being something in particular, you know, it'd be, well, I mean, I, I don't know. It's just kind of, it kind of sucks sometimes if you don't know what you want to do. But if you're like me and you know which kind of firing mode you like and you just set that to that, that's fine. We'll get into more of that later, though. That's more of uh, the internals of the gun. Uh, but that's not the only change in improvement they made. Uh, the second one, of course, being that now it has a battery compartment uh, right here where you can take your little 9-volt battery out. And anybody who's ever used the old grip and knows that you have to take the whole thing off you have to take the safety out, which is always a pain in the butt. You have to take the trigger out, keep all those pieces together, and then slide the battery out, which never wants to come easy, uh, and, uh, and then unhook it, and hopefully you didn't break one of the wires off in the process. And now they've got this method where now instead you just open the little door up, take it off, plug the battery in, slide it in like you're in some sort of weird magazine, and then Look at it. Again, thank God for that. That is such an improvement. A few other things about the design. Uh, you know, they've got a flat base here, so I didn't need to keep my lap coat dropped forward anymore. They've got the 
Uh, they still got the holes for buttons instead. But here's the funny thing about the design, the outside design of the general gun. Um, is I said in my old video, when you got the folding stock on here, that it chews up my knuckle because it sat right there. Well, it just happens to be that the new e-grip has about a half an inch extra space that it's sitting on. I don't know why, but it does. It has that extra space, and now my finger doesn't hit that grip. Uh, so I, I, that alone almost, I feel like, saved me. I mean, it doesn't come anywhere close. There's just no I can pistol grip the thing for the few split seconds that I can do it without tearing up my arm and nothing nothing hits. I love it. That's that's great. Uh, if I have to say anything about the uh, design shape, blah, 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 they did also change it so that you don't have the, the finger grooves in it. It's a flat front, flat back, very different design. Um, and that being said, as I held it forward like I just did, um, it's funny, I, I thought of this this little issue when I got it, I said something about this to myself, and then I handed it to my roommate. My roommate picked it up and thought the immediately thought immediately the exact same thing. Um, and that is that it feels weaker than the other grip. Uh, I don't know how else to describe that other than it just feels like an eggshell versus the old grip. I, I know it's it's strong and sturdy. I mean, it feels like if I put all this heavy aluminum weight from the front of my gun, the aluminum barrel, aluminum uh, apex, the aluminum grenade launcher, the aluminum shroud, all this heavy mass that's on the front of my gun, and basically held it like so, I honestly, it, it feels like after enough time, this would just snap off. I, I, I'm sure it's strong enough. I'm sure it's only because I've seen the other grip versus this, but you know what, even, even my old stock grip, which I still have, there's just something meatier, something stronger, something more solid feeling about this grip that I can't explain why it feels like it does, but it, honestly, my roommate said, he picked it up and was holding it, and he says, I feel like the grip is going to break. It doesn't creak or anything. I, I don't know. I just don't know. It just feels that way. Talk about the outside. Let's talk about uh, not really the inside, but let's talk about, uh, you know, basically how it works, uh, the electronics on the inside. Um, I have to ask Pittman one thing before I start, and that is, what the hell were you thinking? I mean, all right, it's not really Pittman's fault. It's, uh, it's sort of America's fault. Yay! You can buy an assault rifle, but you can't buy a fake one anymore. Um, the thing about it is that, first of all, uh, you, you can't read this, but it says very clearly right there two things. Five firing modes uh, and with 20 balls a second. I don't really need that because, you know, 20 balls a second is a bit much, but I do three-round bursts, so that would be cool on three-round bursts, you know? 20 balls, it's just boop, 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 yeah! You get the grip, and the first thing you do is you read the outside and you say five, five firing modes and 20 balls a second. And then you open it and you find this. This, due to new ASTM standards, the electronics have been capped at 15 balls a second. Now, it's, it's, it's okay. 15 balls a second is pretty powerful. That's more than I would ever need. I'm probably fine with 12 balls a second, to be honest. But, Pittman, how hard would it have been to put this frickin' sticker on the outside of the box so that poor people who buy this thing, expecting 20 balls a second, who read 20 balls a second, just, just don't get that let down. Five firing modes is not true. You have four firing modes. Because... You always have semi-auto. That's the point of this switch. You set it to semi-auto, and then one of the five, I'm sorry, four firing modes. However, one of the firing modes you can set this to is semi-auto. So you can flip your switch from safety to semi-auto, and then to semi-auto. Realistically, I mean, really, guys, I mean, it's just, 
I don't know. Just don't say you have five firing modes. Again, I guess that's... It just it seems de deceptive to me, but switching an e-grip to semi-auto at all makes me wonder, why did you get an e-grip? I'm sure you have your reasons, but why did you get an e-grip? I mean, whatever. I mean, I've only got it so I can set it to semi-auto and then switch to full auto, and I got rid of my old e-grip for that very reason. If you go online and read everything, it says five firing modes. So then you get the box, and you read, and you go, oh, what does it say? Semi-auto, auto response, turbo, and then safety full auto. Safety three shot burst. What do they, what do they mean by safety? Or safety, 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 safety. Safety means ramping, and for some of you out there that don't know what ramping is, that means you now have to fire three rounds before the full auto takes effect. So, full auto, I'm okay with that, because you can bang, shoot, bang, shoot. Or if you see a guy, you can bang, bang, shoot, and then it's brrrr at people. Still makes me mad, but yeah, okay, you can do that. It's the three-round burst. Why, why did three-round burst get a safety feature? You have to fire three rounds to fire three rounds. You have to go bang, 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 bang. That hell of defeats the purpose. I mean, the whole point of three-round burst for me is that I have a scope on here. I've got the apex barrel for range. I'm assuming I'm going to get some guy in my sights long before he sees me, and I want to shoot one pull of the trigger at him accurately, but I want to shoot three balls so that I have three times the accuracy, but not full auto so I don't just go crazy. Firing two shots before then defeats that purpose. I just, it, it aggravates the hell out of me that I have to, you know. And now it stays three round burst for a little while, and then I stop pulling the trigger for a second, and it's semi auto again. Alright? If I had to say one last thing about this thing that I, I just don't understand, okay, we still got the button press system on there. Um, the button press system is, it gives you a lot of options, but at the same time, it, it's so annoying to have to carry something around and stick it in there. And the thing is, every time you turn it off, it resets back to full auto. I mean, let, unless you really get in there, work it, and set your default back. I mean, if you get to a field and you decide you want to do three-round burst, and then you are somehow hit it wrong and you turned it off, or you forgot, you turned it off, you're like, ah, oh, man, I need to go through and set it all again. I mean, it's still kind of going back to the old switcheroo system, the switches, with the, where you twist it and you decide which setting you want, and you leave it there. Some part of me is asking, why didn't we just leave that? Why don't we just still have? Why do we have to have this one button for everything, and then you have to use the trigger in combination? It's Here's an idea, Tim. We live in the 21st century. It's 2011. Everything has a USB port. My cell phone has a little USB port. Uh, my video game has USB ports. This grenade has USB ports. Well, does, my toothbrush has a USB port. I know that the problem with that is that, oh, if we plug it in USB, then you know what's going to happen. People are going to hack it. They're going to figure it out. And then they're going to have their guns shooting God knows what. They're going to be shooting like a billion balls a second. And it's going to be insane. Two, look at all these warning labels. You see all these? These are all basically saying, hey, use this the way you're supposed to use it, or else you can't sue us if you hurt somebody. There's your solution. I'm pulling the trigger right now. Nothing's happening. And that's why I'm getting a new board. Hopefully that solves the problem because now it's working. Five minutes later from now, I can pull the trigger a thousand times. Oh, there we go. Pulling the trigger. Pulling the trigger. Nothing happening. Nothing happening. This is like, <sighs> hopefully the new board solves the problem. I'll give you a new video then. Uh, and then, hey, you know what might happen? Now that I get that all figured out, I might actually get to play again. So. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, see you next time. And, uh, you know, again, thanks for the continued support. Take care. Then. All right. I hear my mouth. Way in my mouth. Oh, wow.